My name is Dan Hao Jin, and I'll be talking to you today in this online video about decision trees, minimax, and alpha beta pruning. So, a little background knowledge. Uh, basically, artificial intelligence comes from computers making decisions. It's centered around the decision theory, and decision trees, minimax, and alpha beta pruning all stem from the decision theory. Some applications with the decision theory involve video games. If you play the latest Call of Duty, you'll understand. Like, the video game, artificial intelligence, has a lot of decision making and is very smart in that regards. Also, non-player characters in adventure games and basic games with decisions such as chess, uh, checkers, go, backgammon, all involve applications into the decision tree. And smart and automated devices use it, as well as other major areas of study, which include economics and statistics. So what is the decision theory? Well, the decision theory is very general. It gives regards to identifying values, uncertainties, and other issues with regards to a given decision, rationality, and optimal resulting decision. This is from Wikipedia, but it basically means that it goes around pr predicting the best possible decision. Let's take a look at the tree structure which I'm sure if you've taken a basic data structures class you'll understand what I'm talking about but a tree basically has a root and children from the tree and eventually ends up being a leaf node as you can see in the diagram for an example of binary tree this is the basis for decision trees, minimax as well as alpha beta pruning methods let's take a look at the decision tree it's often called a classification tree, and basically every move has many possible outcomes. A child node in the decision tree is a decision, whereas the leaf node is the success rate. Here's an example. Uh, you have, say, a game, and your three options are either to move left, move right, or to stay. For generating decision tree, your goal is to maximize your survival and to keep track of like, the survival rate for each move. So moving left has a 50% survival, moving right has a 60% survival, and staying has a 25% survival. So in this situation, you would want to move right. Let's take a look at a more complicated decision tree. Here you have two options. Your first move, you can either move left, move right, or stay. And your second option is either moving left, moving right, or staying from your first option. So if you move left and move left, you'll get a 30% survival rate. If you move right and then move left, you get a 50% survival rate. Here, the best case would be to stay and to move left, where you're guaranteed 80% survival rate. But for a computer, how would you know what two combinations of moves will give you the best survival? Well, here is where a minimax would come into play. So, decision trees show the end result and the probability of your possible decisions. A minimax uses a heuristic function to estimate the each individual node so that for each intermediate step you can figure out which is the best move there and then optimize it continually. In Minimax you also take into consideration your opponent's moves and so every turn that's your move you will maximize your success whereas every opponent's move you will minimize their success. Here's an example. This Minimax example um, is two levels. So you have the opponent's move which is given and their heuristic values 
then the level above that, which is not given, is your move. And the level above that is the opponent's move. The level above that is final, your final move. So, going through the minimax algorithm, you would take the maximum value because you're trying to maximize your heuristic value, whereas the opponent is trying to minimize your heuristic value. So, for this row right above the givens, you would pick the max value. So, you would pick 7 for the first two options, 11, 5 over 2, and 6 over 1. And the next row would be your opponent's moves, which they would pick the minimum value. So they would pick 7 over 11, 5 over 6, to minimize the heuristic value so that they can win. And then, obviously, you want to maximize your heuristic value to win by the largest margin, which you would pick 7. Now, as you can see, if the game that we're trying to simulate through Minimax has a lot of options, say, for example, chess, this approach could take a huge time complexity and space complexity because the branching factor will be very high. Um, and it would be very slow. Now, alpha beta pruning would simplify the number of decisions and the number of nodes that you would look at, which would reduce the running time. How do we do this, you say? Well, let's walk through an example of how to alpha beta prune. Suppose we have the same exact tree from the Minimax example before. Um, with your move, now, you would look uh, at the first two options, which are 7 and 6, and you would pick 7. You would move that up, actually, to the next level. Um, say, theoretically, that the opponent picks 7 as their minimum. Then you look down, and you see 11, which is the next possible opponent move. And you would, of course, maximize that by doing an 11, but the opponent would always pick the 7, so there is no need to look at any more nodes in that area. So you would be able to prune out 3. If you look at the second half of the tree, if you go to 5 and 2, you would pick 5. And your opponent, um, if they don't know what the other nodes are, would pick 5 as a minimum. However, as you can see, the other option will be 7, and you would maximize your output. So, why would you pick 5 over 7? There is no reason. So you can prune out anything after that, since none of those values would matter, since they wouldn't be greater than 7, they wouldn't be greater than 5, well, and so there's no possibility if you look into that tree that there would be a move that would be better than 7. So you prune out 6 and 1 and just pick 5. And then your final output is 7, which is the same as what we've gotten in the minimax um, approach, but we've been able to cut 4 nodes. Obviously, that example that we just gave is a small example with up to two possible options. But if you were to extend this to a branching factor like you, that you find in chess with, I don't know, let's say a hundred different moves, you can save quite a bit of pruning um, and not looking at a lot of nodes with this alpha beta pruning method. Let's take a look at the complexity of alpha beta proof and minimax. And you see that minimax, the running time complexity is big O of B to the D, where B is the branching factor and D is the depth. This is quite slow once you reach a high depth. And in alpha beta pruning, in the worst case, if you don't prune any nodes, obviously the algorithm would still be the same big O of B to the D, but in the best case, you can essentially prune the square root of B to the D, which can allow you to go to a twice um, level of depth 
than you would initially if you don't do alpha beta pruning in the same amount of time and space. Uh, this about sums up my online video. Uh, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you'll stay tuned for any future videos I will create. Also, thank you so much Dr. Fisher for teaching this class and it was wonderful being having you as a professor. It definitely cheer me up sometimes. And uh, yeah, hopefully you don't get too annoyed at me for being in your class for the last year and a half and have all the rest a good um, Christmas and wonderful rest of the year. Thank you.